Hello, good day, and welcome back to Go on the Run. And today is going to be our last video for the year and the last video for Kubernetes. So we're going to end 2022 by closing it out with all the Kubernetes stuff. This is not everything you need to know about Kubernetes, so use this as a foundation and keep learning. So I want to close out Kubernetes by showing you a few tools that you can use to manage your Kubernetes clusters. Now I say clusters because so far we haven't spoken about the fact that though you can actually have configuration that um, lists a number of Kubernetes clusters and you can choose between which cluster you want to manage. And so um, this is something that's really important because you might be working with, you know, like a local cluster and then maybe a development cluster or production cluster and that sort of thing. Um, if you're doing this at work and even at home, you might have like the Kubernetes clusters that's created by Docker desktop. You might have a Kubernetes cluster created by Kine, a Kubernetes cluster created by K3D, all that stuff, or a Minikube. And so even on your local machine, you might have multiple clusters. So you want to be able to, you want to know that how you can switch between them if you have all of them running at the same time. All right, let's jump in. So what are we going to be covering today? Like I said, are tools for managing your Kubernetes cluster. And I'm going to start with what I consider the easiest to install and work up to the more difficult ones to install, in my opinion. And so kubectl, if you've been doing this Kubernetes um, thing with me, you will have kubectl. Um, the next one are going to be command line also, but I put them in a separate category of text user interface because even though they're in the command line, they um, give you some kind of UI, you know, with boxes and all this other stuff and buttons that you can either click on or tab over to and all this other stuff. So I consider them a UI, but a text-based UI. And so in that category, I have K9S and K dash. And then with the graphical ones, these are going to be um, UI based, but no graphical UI. And so these are going to be applications that you're actually going to start up and pop up the own screen that they manage. Not to say that the text UI one don't pop up the own screen, but you can actually use K9S and K dash on a remote system, for example, because even though you have just a text based terminal interface, they're going to render a UI for you and you're still going to be able to do the same thing. Whereas the graphical one, you can only use them locally. And so that's going to be VS Code because it's an application. If you're not a VS Code user, you'd have to install VS Code as an application and then use the VS the Kubernetes plugin. Um, also, as a graphical application, there's um, Open Lens and Lens, and I'll describe the difference between them a little bit. And um, then there's Octant, um, which is also a graphical tool. That's very similar to Lens and Open Lens. And then finally, web-based one. And for web-based one, we have the KHS dashboard, Kubernetes dashboard. And we've used that before a long time ago. And to me, that's a little bit more work to install. So it comes at the end. And then Schooner, um, also similar to Kubernetes dashboard. These are the web-based one, um, because once you install the dashboard, you still have to like either port forward or something, have access to your Kubernetes cluster so you can get to it. So a little bit more work, but they're web-based. You access them with your web browser. Okay, so let's jump in with the very first tool. I have a kind cluster running. Um, it could be any cluster, so it doesn't matter. Um, here I'm talking about the Kubernetes CTL, um, the first tool, and you can get to it by going to the Kubernetes website and then on the task and install tool, you'll see that you have here um, kubectl and you can install it for whatever platform you want. So that's pretty straightforward and you should already have this. So nothing new there. But again, what this looks like is you can type kubectl and you can do things like get pods, you can get um, deployment, you can get your service, uh, you can get your nodes in your cluster, you can get your ingress, that sort of thing. And so uh, kubectl, um, let's try it again. So you, you can get, um, you can get all this stuff, right? And of course, there are options to do like minor output, wide, for example, that sort of thing. So you can get even more information. So that's what it's like being able to manage your cluster with kubectl. And any place where you have access to a Kubernetes cluster, 
you're going to be able to use this. Now, I mentioned that how oh, you can have multiple clusters. So how do you manage multiple clusters? Well, there's a config file, cube config file. And if we go to your home directory that cube, you will see that oh, there's a config file in here called config. And this file lists all the clusters that Kubernetes clusters that you have access to. Now, what has been happening is every time you create a cluster with K3D or Docker desktop or whatever cluster you decide to use, Kubernetes cluster you decide to use, it creates a cluster and it inserts the configuration for that cluster into that file automatically for you. Right now I have a K kind cluster. If I were to run K3D cluster create and create a cluster now, what's going to happen is after it creates that cluster, it's going to set my default cluster now to K3D cluster. And so now my commands would be accessing my K3D. But my kind cluster configuration is still there and my kind cluster is still running. So how do I access it? Well, if we take a look at this file, so I'm going to do config, open it up in VS Code. And as you can see, that it has this thing that says it's a YAML file essentially without having the YAML extension. And so it has clusters and then notice each entry is a cluster entry and there's some certificate information where exactly to find that cluster and the name of the cluster. So right now I only have two clusters to find. Then there's another section called context. Each context for your cluster, you can have multiple contexts, um, but the context defined says which cluster and which user. It's like tying a specific user information to a specific cluster. And so the user information is below here. And it's important that you do not share this information with anyone because um, anyone who has this information could just simply insert it in their um, config file and be able to access your cluster. And the reason why you can see mine is because I'm only showing partial part of that, um, you know, client key and all this other stuff. I'm not showing the whole thing. All right. So now we know where the information is stored that the different tool use. Now I can close this and we'll just keep that in mind. All right. So the next um, tool is K9S. Now K9S is a command line tool from um, this company called Rancher essentially, and they make a number of things. They actually make the K3S tool to um, K3D tool for um, creating your simple cluster, um, development cluster. And so they also make, also make K9S. Um, and as you can see, it's fairly easy to install. Um, just follow the installation instruction for whatever platform you're on. But once you have it installed, um, you can just type K9S and it brings it up. And this is why I say it's a command line tool, but it has a text-based UI, as you can see, you know, they have boxes and so on. And you can see that they have some um, help that they always show you here, some of the keys that are, um, or key combinations that are valid within this particular mode. So let's say we're talking about pods these are all the keys that are valid for this pod looking at the pod view um, at any time you can um, get help with um, you know question mark um, if you do want to switch let's say you don't want to look at pods but you want to look at deployment you type colon and that is similar to when you use v vim or vi how you type colon to type a command and then now you can type like namespaces or deployment and you know once you do that now you're switching as you can see from the bottom here you could you switch to deployment i'm not going to go through everything about um, k9s because depending on who's using it um you know you might not everyone might have want to use k9s so there's no point in me spending time showing you how to use k9s um the, the documentation is really good so i suggest that you go to the k9s website and then just sort of follow their tutorial and you have a pretty good idea of how to use um, K9S. Um, also, notice how that context and cluster and the user information is being shown here, which is what we saw in the file. To quit this colon, and then you type QUIT or just Q, for example. Um, the next 
TUI tool or text UI tool is K dash. And K dash is a tool that's written in Rust and it's at this website. And again, follow the installation um, for your platform. I mean, you could download the zip or you can just, you know, install it as you can see here for Windows and Linux and so on. But once you have it installed, as you can see, it's similar in a way to K9S, so K dash. As you can see, you have some more sort of similar setup listing things. One of the things about K-Dash is in addition to using, showing you these, the keys that you can type to get to these different, very different things. So um, the four key is going to take you over to config map. Five is going to take you to stateful set, for example. If you want to see deployments, I will type seven. And so that's easy to jump to. So you just like one letter uh, one number you just type one number you can quickly jump to those things or you can type i can use left and right arrow keys so if i use the left right, right arrow keys i can move through things the same way and here on more um, if you type zero there are things that weren't listed so for example secrets um, you know would be under there but you can see the same information here too about the client information um, k9s shows you that um, okay, that shows you um, all this information about what's being used, your Kubernetes version and so on, the client version, but also the cluster information we see here, the context, cluster, and user information, show you additional things like the CPU and all this other stuff, which right now there are no metrics being collected by my cluster because I don't have the metrics thing installed, so that's not being shown. And here's our namespaces. We talked about namespaces before, and you can see all the namespaces are listed, essentially. Um, and so you can um, type N so that or you can select this box and then you can move up and down to select the namespace that you want. So um, that's a nice easy way of switching between namespaces. And so if you want to jump back into this box, you can see as soon as I type enter there, this box was highlighted with the yellow around it saying that oh, it's selected. So any command I type now is going to apply in this box. If I want to start, if I want to switch, for example, my cluster information, I could type I and that goes up. So um, that's another way of moving around. And of course, you have help the same way with um, question mark. And of course, um, if you type that, you can get that and you can move in and out. And you can type escape to get back out um, there. All right. So the next thing you can do um, is, of course, quit. So you type um, colon quit Q and it gets out of there by just simply typing colon Q. And so that's K dash. So the next one I'd like to show is VS Code. And so once you have VS Code installed for your platform, and let's say we have VS Code running, so I start up VS Code, what you can do then is install the Kubernetes plugin for um, from Microsoft. And so what you do is, is you go to this plugin and this extension um, section here of VS Code. And then once you're there, you can search for Kubernetes. You'll see a number of them come up. The one I install is, as you can see, the one from Microsoft. There are not ones from other people and all this other stuff. I don't like Kubernetes support here from some other user. I don't install those. And um, you can also see that oh, there is a Kubernetes kind specific plugin from Microsoft. I haven't installed that one. That's why the install button is there for me to install it but I do have this installed. With that install, once you have that installed, and we can switch to the Kubernetes um, node here. And so if you don't see it in the list like this, then you might see um, this overflow, and then you can click on Kubernetes. And so once you click on Kubernetes, notice you have your clusters. Again, remember from our config file, we had um, Docker desktop and we have our kind cluster. And so now you can just expand that and start seeing all the stuff for your cluster. I'm going to close up Helm repo here because we're not using that and cloud stuff. And so namespaces, we talk about that. You can see your default namespace is what's using, but you can click here to switch to a different namespace. And you can see the configuration for that. Usually with um, this VS Code plugin, when you click on something, it tends to show you the YAML. What you want to do is right click. So if you want to use that namespace, you can right click and do this um, to switch to that namespace. And then now all the, um, not nodes, nodes are not across namespace. If you remember, we covered that already. 
but your workloads like deployment and so on will be for that namespace namespace so pods for example we have this pods my pod 3 that's deployed in the test group namespace if i want to change my namespace i go back and i right click on this i say use the default namespace and now you can see my workload for deployment and pods show many other jobs and stuff running um, stateful set and so on if i was running those sort of things we, we didn't cover that so that's the vs code with the kubernetes plugin the next tool is open lens and lens now instead of actually jumping straight into showing you what open lens look like or lens um, i will point you to this article that describe or explain the difference between what lens is and open lens and basically open lens is the open source um, version of Lens. The company that is behind this have a Git repository with all the code, but when they want to make a commercial version called Lens, they added some other things to it. And even though it might be free to use, um, they do collect some information, yada, yada, yada. Um, there's some restriction on who can use it. And so I encourage you to read this article to make sure that all you understand if you should be using it at your, if you're using it at home, it's perfectly fine, but if you're going to use it at your workplace, make sure you don't use something that could then put your company in trouble. So you should understand what is it that you're using. Uh, if you don't want to worry about all that stuff, just use Open Lens. It's the same code essentially, and again, this article explains the difference. And so one of the places that you can get a build version of Open Lens is listed in this article. So I suggest you go read it. I'm not going to point you to it because you should figure out whether or not you want to use open lens or lens and if you don't want to build it yourself open lens then wish if you should trust who's building it so keep that in mind but anyway once you have the executable for open lens or lens once you start it up you're going to have um, an installation in your computer and so in my case i'm using open lens not lens but again they're pretty much similar and once it comes up you're going to see something like this, like browse, cluster, and catalog. And now you can see again, those two um, clusters that we have, Kubernetes clusters, and you know where that information is coming from. And if you weren't sure, look at that, it points you to them. And so you can have file other places too, and you can add them. So you can add configuration here for other clusters. If you have the config file store somewhere else, it doesn't have to be in the that cube directory. That's just the default location where these tools will look for it. And so if I select my K9 cluster, because that's the one that's running, notice how it says disconnected. And so I can connect to it or just select it. And it's going to go connect and pull some information. Because I do not have metric stuff installed in my cluster, it doesn't show me that information here for Grafana and Prometheus. But don't worry about that if you don't know what those things are. But I can go and look at the nodes I have run in my cluster. For kind, it runs one node if you remember when we do k3d we can have multiple nodes on the workload same thing this sort of follow the same sort of um, layout that you see in many of the other tools like the graphical tools like even the vs code one where it had a workload and on the workload you had um, pods and deployment and then you had storage and network and that sort of thing grouped by itself and so the nice thing here with these graphical tools is it can show you like how many pods you're running. The other thing is that it can show you across all namespace. So this is what I really like because sometimes I don't want to just look at my deployment names, uh, my default namespace or my test group namespace. I want to see what's going on across all namespace. Um, so all namespaces. So this is really nice for that. And of course, you know, you can drill down and then just look at pods only, deployments only, and so on. And of course, if you want to, you can go to look at storage and persistent volume. So this is our persistent volume and then persistent volume claim, sorry, or persistent volume and all that good stuff, right? Um, of course, namespaces allow you to create and add namespaces right here. So what I can do is click on home here and I can, um, if I go back here, I can say disconnect from this um, cluster. Uh, you don't have to, but you might want to, but this allows you to have many cluster connections. And so each one of these would be sort of like a set of clusters um, that you could connect to. Okay, so I can quit this because it's a graphical application. The next tool is Octant. 
An octant is very similar to lens and open lens, um, except there's no like commercial version of it. But once you go download, install it, um, you'll have an executable on your computer. And so you can just start that up. Once it's up and running, you can see this icon there for octant. And so here you go. Um, this is an overview. You can go do things in your preference, like such a dark team and so on that I have here, or a light team. And they call it out here, our back, you know, your role base authentication and control. You have events, things that happen in your clusters. Um, and then you can do look at your configuration and storage. So again, config map and so on. And so here we go. These are config values. If you remember config map values, keys and values. And if we look at secret, um, here we have some secrets and it tells you um, the keys, but it doesn't show you the value. You can click here to copy it and it copies to your system dashboard and now you can paste it. Of course, if you actually want to see those things, you can still go to resource viewer, um, the YAML, and you can see the values there that was the YAML that was used to create it. So it's not as a so ultra secret, but at least um, when you're looking at the summary page, it doesn't show you um, right away. And similarly, you know, you can look at workloads and on the workloads, you get an overview. And again, similar thing, you can get a workload across namespaces. Um, so you can then select which namespace that you, you want to see. And so this is the default namespace and you can choose, use that to navigate across namespaces. Unlike um, open lens or lens, this doesn't have a all namespaces. So, um, you know, that's one thing to keep in mind. But other than that, same idea you can use to navigate around. So, I mean, they're all pretty much the same. Um, so um, not too hard to really figure out what's going on. Um, so yeah, not much to say here. All right, so that's Octant. The last two are going to be Kubernetes dashboard. And you can get to it by going to the documentation and then going to task and on the task, um, clicking on access um, application and cluster and then deploy access to Kubernetes dashboard. And we did this before, right? We saw how to apply this, create um, a user and so on to access the Kubernetes dashboard. Just got to follow the, the, um, the instructions here. Um, I consider these harder because not only do you have to run this apply command, but then um, that that's not all. You actually have to create like a sample user and all this other stuff before you can actually access the and proxy it, which you know is point creating a local port on your local machine back to the cluster in order to to access the dashboard. But once you do that, you do get a very nice interface again that looks very similar. As you can see, things are broken down by you know, workloads and all this other stuff. Um, I didn't do it now because I want to make this video sort of short. And again, it doesn't make sense for me to go through how to install exactly this when the documentation is right there. And we've done it before. Um, similar to the Kubernetes dashboard is this one Schooner. And again, if you go to Schooner website and you see getting started, you install, you run this apply command and um, um, install Schooner to be able to access a dashboard that they create. However, before you can do that, even after you reapply this, notice that you have to still create like an ingress and all this other stuff. You have to create the use a service account and secrets and get the token similar to the Kubernetes dashboard. So this is why I said these are much harder. So like, why would I go through this to have a web-based dashboard when I can use a dash uh, graphical, I, I can use a UI that is either text-based or graphical-based UI that just points to my Kubernetes cluster once I, for which I will have the configuration. Like once I can use kubectl, my text-based UI or my graphical UI will work. So why go through the headache of doing all of this to get a browser-based dashboard? So I personally don't use these. All right, that's it in terms of Kubernetes management tool. I hope you find the one that you like. Um, keep looking, maybe there might be some new ones coming out. Um, if you look at the channel now, you should see it all. There are many playlists that are much easier to navigate. 
Um, I didn't realize that even though I was putting things in playlists that it wasn't showing up nice and clean. So I had to rename those playlists and yes, it's much easier now. It was very confusing. So thanks for keep asking for that and letting me know I thought it wasn't working for you. And so yeah, take care, have a great new year and see you in 2023 where are we going to start something new? I'll post in 2023 what we're going to be looking at and where exactly are we going to start. So being this is our last video for 2022, thanks a lot. Happy New Year. I hope you're doing well and see you in 2023. Um, take care. Thanks and bye.